Good morning and welcome to worship this morning. It is a joy to be with you today on this bright and sunshiny morning here. For worship today, we are grateful to have Bonnie Tolfstead here to provide us with music leadership today. And we thank you for joining us wherever you may be watching this this morning. During our worship today, we will celebrate Holy Communion. And so now is a great time to grab some bread or crackers, wine, water, grape juice, whatever you have on hand as we celebrate the Holy Meal together. I have a few announcements. The first is a thank you from our service ministry team. Thank you to all who supported through your time, your talents, and your treasures our caring tree and our care packages. Yesterday, 155 children received gifts and 70 households received care packages. And that wouldn't be possible without your generosity. So thank you for that. Also, if you ordered a Texas takeout meal today after worship at 945, that's the time when you wanna swing into the church, into the Circle Drive and come and pick up your meal. Then at 10 o'clock, 
If you go back to your weekly e-newsletter, you can click on the link for our virtual fellowship hour. So grab a cup of coffee, your favorite comfy chair, and come for some conversation. And then our youth have Sunday school at 10 o'clock as well. And then finally, a thank you to members of our UFTA group. They partnered with Lutheran Immigration and Refugee Services and wrote 60 Christmas cards. And those Christmas cards will go into care packages to folks who are in detention centers on the border as they stay there for Christmas this year, waiting for entry into our country. And so we thank them for their hearts, their time to share God's love in that unique and special way. So with those announcements concluded, let us pause for a moment and prepare our hearts and our minds for worship. Our worship begins this morning in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So today we light our second Advent candle. And please join me in this liturgy that is found in your bulletin. A voice cries out, a call for God's Holy Spirit to come again. The cries come as a yearning for peace. The dramatic and prophetic change was so needed then and today too. And so we light this first Advent candle of hope, trusting that hope for a Savior remains. And then we light this second candle, this candle of peace, believing that God's Son might usher in new order, where God's love will breathe new life into each of our lives. And so, friends, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us confess our sins before God and one another in this time of confession and forgiveness. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Well, friends, God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in our hearts through faith. Amen. Our gathering hymn today is hymn number 266, All Earth is Hopeful.
Let us pray. Steadfast God, you never abandoned your people when they were at their lowest. Hold your promises before our eyes that they might shine brighter than any darkness which threatens to overcome us. For the sake of your son, Jesus. Amen. Our reading this morning is from the prophet Joel, the second chapter. Yet even now, says the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. Rend your hearts and not your clothing. Return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and relents from punishing. Then afterward, I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams, and your young men shall see visions. Even on the male and female slaves in those days, I will pour out my spirit. Friends, this is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, grace and peace to you from God, our Father, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. There has been an interesting phenomenon that has been happening during this time of social distancing as we've been spending more time at home. Many Americans have embarked on an organizational frenzy of tearing through their closets, garages, and basements and donating items to organizations like the Salvation Army and local clothes closets. Donations of tangible items usually increase during the winter months, but soon, as the pandemic hit, a drive by our Onalaska Goodwill would show cars snaking all the way around the parking lot as people were there to drop off items. Only in the last few months have I noticed fewer cars. Why has there been this drive to tear up our closets, to get rid of the old or excess and to organize? In a time of pandemic, where doing the simplest and routine task of grocery shopping comes at a risk. Maybe we need something to control. Maybe we need peace in our homes that comes from everything being right and orderly and in its place. Perhaps we are unconsciously getting rid of that 10th sweater, the fourth extra extension cord, or pieces of gym equipment that have been collecting dust to create order out of chaos, peace in the midst of pandemic. We started our worship this morning by lighting the second Advent candle, the candle of peace. Like many of you, I am weary from the anxiety caused by our time of social distancing. I miss being able to call up a friend, hop in the same car to go sit inside a favorite coffee spot and talk about life. No worries about masks or breathing in some virus or sitting just a foot apart at those tiny cafe tables. I miss laughing in person. I miss a stranger saying hello as they kind of squeeze through the chairs that have our puffy winter coats on them as they try to go to their tiny table. The smells of coffee and the sounds of Christmas music playing as I sip my decaf almond milk peppermint latte with whip. Those times shared with others are peace for me during this hustle and bustle of the usual holiday season. But this season is different. And as much as we try and make things as similar as possible with our Wednesday Holden Evening Prayer now online and our Zoom Christmas gatherings with our church groups, it's not the same. We feel the chaos. We notice the distance. And we want peace. So where does that peace come from? 
Well, our scripture lesson this morning is from the prophet Joel. And God's people at that time were also experiencing upheaval. They had returned from exile after being stolen away by their enemies, and they were back and trying to rebuild their lives. They had suffered greatly. They'd seen everything that they ever knew and held dear ripped away, and now they've come home to desolation. A new day had dawned, but how did they begin? So the prophet Joel proclaims to God's people that first, they must repent and return to God. They're not to worry about the old ways of worship in the temple, their sacrifices, and what they'd always done in the public square. Instead, God is asking them to return from the inside out, to turn their lives over to God and to mourn the loss of what was before. Mourn and lament their misdeeds, see the baggage that they've carried with them, and then let it go. Joel uses a very specific word that we translate in English as rend. We don't use the word rend often in our common vernacular, but it means to tear with intentionality, with force. And God's people are to rend their hearts, the source of who they are, and rid themselves of what is holding them back in their grief, and then return to God with their whole heart. Not something superficial, like tearing their clothes on the outside, which was the traditional sign of mourning, but to tear up our very being on the inside. I kind of liken this to a spiritual cleaning of closets. We keep in the closet of our heart the pain that we carry from those we have experienced the most severe kinds of hurt, Pain from past relationships, from cruel bosses or co-workers, or broken relationships in our families. We also harbor in our hearts our regrets and the ways that we wish we had not sinned against someone or the pain that we have caused. All of us have a story that we wish we could rewrite or we wish we had a do-over card. Maybe it's something for you that's small. Or maybe it's not. But we carry this baggage with us and we keep our hearts cluttered. Joel reminds God's people and us today that God wants us, the core of who we are, not when we're perfect, but right now. God wants us to return in our brokenness and promises us to be gracious and merciful slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love, God relents from punishing, Joel tells us, and instead welcomes us back wholeheartedly, mending the torn hearts that have been ripped through, ripping through that baggage, and us returning, needing so desperately to be made whole again. But only God can mend our torn hearts. And God does that through God's Spirit, who is promised to all people, everyone, those who look like us and those who do not, those who vote the way we do and those who do not, those whose families look the same as mine and those who do not. God loves them all and pours out God's Spirit on men and women, young and old, those with power and a voice and those without it. God is as close as our very breath and will help us to see God in new ways in our everyday lives through the word of God and in dreams hoping for what is to come. That's where peace comes from. Cleansed hearts that have returned to God and been soothed and mended by God's spirit who is always with us, leading and guiding us not guaranteeing us peace and calm on the outside, but peace from within. Like God's people who came before us, we all go through times of chaos. Sometimes it's very personal, like the loss of a child or a deep betrayal. And other times it's war or pandemic or recession. 
And when those things happen over the course of our lives, we collect that hurt and that pain and we hold them in tiny cardboard boxes within our hearts. Maybe it's the pain of missing Thanksgiving with your grandkids this year. The grief of not being able to mourn the loss of a loved one with a large traditional funeral inside the church. The divide between close friends over who you voted for. And so many more things that I could name. Joel is reminding us today that God wants us to return with our whole hearts and to tear open those tiny boxes that sit there. Acknowledge before God what is the thing that's preventing you from peace, and God will be gracious and bless you with God's Spirit. The Spirit is the same today as those poured out on God's people back in the prophet Joel's day. The same Spirit who came to an unwed teenager and conceived the Savior of the world in her womb. And the same Spirit who descended on that precious child of God who rose from the waters of baptism and was anointed for the reconciliation ministry ahead. The Spirit brought Jesus to us, the one whose birth we anticipate and we wait for this Advent season. The Gospel writer John describes him this way, And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as one, the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. My prayer is that you experience this grace and God's peace during these waiting days ahead. Amen. We continue our worship today with our hymn of the day, My Soul Proclaims Your Greatness, hymn number 251. now confess together what we believe using the words of the Apostles Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ God's only Son our Lord who was conceived by the Holy Spirit born of the Virgin Mary suffer under Pontius Pilate was crucified died and was buried. 
he descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Today, as we go before our Lord in our prayers of intercession, please use those chat functions in Facebook and YouTube Live so that we can pray with you this week as we read your prayer requests, what you have on your heart this morning for worship. So we gather today to pray for the church, the world, and all who are in need. In this season of tinsel and twinkling illusions, grant us a deeper joy that endures throughout these days, the burning promise of our coming Savior, God of hope, hear our prayer. In the spirit of St. Nicholas, use us to minister to those in need, providing for their lack without seeking recognition or thanks, but only the fulfillment of recognizing our connection with all of your children. God of hope, hear our prayer. The earth is forgiving, even as its creator is, renewing what has been depleted and repairing what has been damaged. Make us partners in the recovery of this planet from the ravages of our abuse and neglect and accept our repentance for all that we have done. God of hope, hear our prayer. In the reality of this pandemic, missing our loved ones, financial insecurity, and the struggle for justice and rights for all people, we can fall into despair and lose hope. Rekindle your light within all who have given up and work through us to reach out to the lonely, sad, and discouraged. Send your healing spirit to all those who need it, especially those on our prayer list and those we name before you this day. God of hope, hear our prayer. With all your faithful saints, we join our voices with the heavenly chorus, praising the one who delivers and delights our hearts with the promise of eternal life. God of hope, hear our prayer. Our eyes await the fulfillment of all your promises, the answer to all our prayers, your Son, our Lord Jesus. Amen. And at this time, we would traditionally collect our offering, and I first want to thank you all for the ways that you have been so generous during this time as we're worshiping together, but differently. So thank you for the ways that you give in the things like our caring tree and trick-or-treat so others can eat, but also in offering, because that helps continue these ministries and send them out of these doors and into the lives of people in our community and beyond. So ways that you can contribute to that ministry at Holman Lutheran is through our Dropbox outside or also through our website and Facebook page. Thank you so much for your generosity. Let us pray. Loving God, you call us to return to you with all our hearts and to give our lives to your service. Accept these offerings of love and use us as your servants to bring your light of mercy to all the world. Amen. At this time, we celebrate together Holy Communion, so I invite you to get your elements handy as we prepare the table together. We remember that on the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, he gave thanks, and he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this 
in remembrance of me. Gathered into one by God's Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Friends, this is the body of Christ given for you. And this is the blood of Christ shed for you. Take and eat. May the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. May the Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace. In the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. A reminder that we have fellowship hour at 10 o'clock. You can pick up those Texas takeout meals and also Sunday school at 10 as well. We hope you can join us. So friends, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs>